All right, Lisa, I think we are ready to go, my sister. Okay, so we are actually live now. I hope yep. some people are joining us. So I am Lisa Morgan, Vice President of jo the Georgia Association of Educators. And I am Justin T. Johnson, Middle School Business Education in DeKalb County. And I have the pleasure of serving as the Secretary Treasurer of the Georgia Association of Educators. So we want to welcome you to our first Facebook Live this afternoon. <laughs> And we really want you to put some questions, put some comments in the chat. Let us know what's happening in your locals, in your districts. We know a 14% cut to the state budget is going to impact our educators and our students. So what is that looking like in South Georgia? What is that looking like in East Georgia? What is that looking like in North West Georgia in Northeast Georgia. Let us know what you're hearing in your districts. Yes, so as Lisa mentioned, um, please, please, please comment those things. Um, again, due to the COVID-19 crisis, it is very difficult for us to get around physically um, around the state, but we are here with you. We want to remind you and notify you that GAE is here with you. Um, throughout the state. And so we want you to comment those things um, underneath this particular live. And as Lisa and I were even mentioning earlier, um, even as you begin to type some of those things and those issues, those concerns, we want to also remind you that as a local, you can actually slow some of this stuff down um, because you have 3 million plus uh, adv advocating with you. So please, please, please remember that. Um, Lisa, you want to kind of go ahead and start us off here? Okay. So one thing we do need to talk about, about that slowdown that can happen, because a traditional year that we've experienced for years, our school districts had to have their budget finished by June 30th. But they typically had at least two months after the state budget was finished to complete that process by June 30th. This year, we don't even have a state budget. They'll have one by June 30th, but they don't have it now. And some of our districts are operating on that traditional calendar that they have to be finished by June 30th. But they can slow that process down, and I hope we can advocate for our members for that to happen, to slow that process down so that they know for sure what the cut's going to be from the state before they start assuming that they are going to pass the full 14% that they said it might be. I'm sure that the 14% was the worst case scenario. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it, they had to start with the worst case scenario. We understand that but hopefully it's not quite as bad as the 14%. And when the legislature actually goes into session, the cuts may not be as deep as we thought they were. And I don't know if you all heard Governor Kent Monday, but he reiterated that education is his priority yes. for the budget. So we can be hopeful that it won't be 14% for the QBE, and we can also call our legislators, call the governor, mm -hmm. call our school boards and say, hey, we have students that we know are going to need more from us in the classroom. When we go back to the classroom, we can't do it with less. Oh yeah, uh, you know, and something that I would like to add to that is, you know, while revenue has decreased, um, the, basically, the cuts that were inflicted um, upon education back in 2008 left, you know, an entire generation of Georgia's kids underfunded. And so, therefore, we cannot um, have another generation suffer um, in that, with that same fate. And so, it's important that we get out there, we advocate. Um, and when Lisa and I say slow down, um, first, I want to just give kudos to the Gwinnett County uh, community. That's an idea or um, basically a suggestion, a perfect image of what it means to come together as a collaborative community um, and slow something down. Um, as we know, 
the Gwinnett County Public Schools was asking our teachers to return back to schools uh, before the quote unquote end date um, of the school year. And so I know that there was a rally of educators, community members, such as parents, uh, business owners who got out there and as Lisa stated, start emailing the local school boards. And I know that that is that contributed highly to why they are now not having to return back to that school um, for safety reasons as well. So always keep the kids in the forefront, but also don't forget about the educators as well. Yeah, and Justin, one thing that I think that did, because I know it was not just educators in Gwinnett mm -hmm. that were speaking out about that. It was a ripple effect because then the news media started asking yep. all the different districts and nobody wanted to be the next one to say, oh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to do the wrong thing. And the slowdown with the budget can also have that impact. Mm -hmm. If a couple of districts will come out and DeKalb has said that they are not going to pass their budget until July. And yeah. so they are going to slow that process down. And if two or three districts slow the process down, we'll have that ripple effect. It will and go you out. Know what, and you know what we experience a lot of times uh, here in the metro area, because Lisa and I are both in the cab, and we'll sit there and we will watch our phones um, as APS, whether it's counseling schools um, or they're just simply, you know, doing those different things. We're like, okay, we're waiting on the next school district to do something. And so I'm sure this passed a very strong message to all school districts surrounding. Uh, so, yes. Yes, it did. And I know the um, districts are going to also start making those decisions about going back. And one thing we need to do, and if you're not already registered, there is a, at 7 p.m. tonight, NEA is doing a webinar about what we need to advocate for, for when we go back and when it will be safe for us to go back in our buildings with our students. So mm -hmm. if you can join us tonight at seven o'clock, I know Justin shared the link, I've shared the link, and I know <laughs> GAE has shared the link. Um, we would love for you to be there so you can see what we are asking for when we go back, because I teach kindergarten and I have had the experience and I'm afraid this is what's gonna happen when we go back that the child has a fever mm -hmm. and mom, mom wakes them up and they've got a little fever. So they give them some Tylenol and they don't have a fever then when they walk in the classroom. But three or four hours later, the fever spikes, they feel horrible. And then we have to find somebody to come pick them up. And we don't want those kinds of things to happen, especially if our only method of checking students in the morning is going to be temperature checks. Right. And how will that work? I can't imagine the bus driver checking everybody's temperature as they're getting on the bus. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so in some well, of these and, conversations, and they need to listen to us. Even, yes, be, Justin, even, being, asy even being asymptomatic, you know, right. um, like may not always have an increased temperature, those types of things. And so, I agree with you on that one, Lisa, is I think, you know, even for us, that Friday was our teacher planning day. And so our mm -hmm. kids left that Thursday thinking, oh, they're going to see Ms. Morgan and Mr. Johnson on that Monday and yes. did not, you know. And so I think going back is going to be just as tough, if not even more difficult um, than leaving than when we left in March. Um, yes. And as I know you will get depressed if you think about how you left your classroom. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I left I left my classroom ready for Monday morning. I didn't leave my classroom ready for the summer. And right. no, but that's one of those things. When will it be safe for us to go back? And if that happens in June or that happens in July, what is that ramping up going to look like? So all these things we're talking about, we really need to be talking with 
our school board members, our administration, and our legislators so they know the reality of what it will be like when we get there. Oh yeah, and it's important for um, you know all of our members who are out there watching this live and even after the video is there on Facebook that you um, comment and share those things with us, um, you know, so that we know how to move forward as an association and continue to advocate for our members and public education here in Georgia. And so um, speaking of that, as we talk about those stories, um, I know that GAE has recently posted as well um, and has been reaching out to members because we want to hear those stories. We want to see what does um, being an educator look like during the COVID-19 crisis. And so if you have those stories, those compelling stories, please, please, please um, share them with us. Um, you can email our communications director at Kevin, K-E-V-I-N dot Pearson, P-E-A-R-S-O-N at G-A-E dot org. Um, so that we can share those things, we can post them on our social media, um, and just kind of, you know, basically highlight the great things that are happening in public education during this COVID-19 crisis and distance learning. Okay, shall we switch, shift gears a little bit and talk about voting, Justin? <laughs> um, because July 9th um, will be our primary here in Georgia. And um, June, June. June, yes, yes. June. See, June. Our days are getting all mixed up. <laughs> Don't know what day it is, but June 9th is the primary, and we at GAE want our members to exercise their right to vote, but we want you to do it safely. Yes. So GAE is partnering with Fair Fight for a seminar Saturday at 1 p.m., and the link will go here in the live, and we will share it all all over the place when we're done um, but we'd love for you to join us for that so that we can vote by mail and be safe um, in Georgia we're not used to voting by mail most people in Georgia early vote or we mm -hmm. vote on election day mm -hmm. and the safest way for us to vote this year is to vote by mail and it is easy have you done it yet Justin I recently completed my absentee ballot uh, form. And so I will be getting mine so that I can uh, vote by mail. But that is, my, that is my plan. And I will be pushing out even on Saturday because um, I think they're involving like Hustle. Hustle is an app that allows us to reach out to our members uh, via text message. And so we will be promoting that as Lisa and I have just shared, as Lisa just shared, uh, we will be definitely be asking our members to vote by mail and make sure that those get in um, in a timely manner. So yes, that is my plan, Lisa. I have voted. I mailed my ballot back Monday and it was so easy and it took about a week and a half to get it back once they once I requested it. So it was very mm -hmm. easy, but you don't realize until you have the ballot in front of you, it's a very, very long ballot. It oh yeah. Pages front <laughs> and back. Okay, yeah. so do I'm not seeing any questions um, and that's really, we really want to hear from you, our members. So we know what is happening with you during this time of yeah. social distancing. So I bet I know we have maybe a quick topic that um, might bring some questions, Lisa, I'm thinking. Um, so when we think about distance yeah. learning and how we as educators kind of had to say, okay, now we have to teach remotely, um, those types of things. COVID-19 not only affected the way that we as we did, did business as educators, but it also affected how we moved forward with business as an association. And so therefore, we will be no longer, we won't have our spring RA face-to-face, -face, but we're gonna have it in a virtual platform. And so we will be having our virtual spring RA June, Technically, it's the 9th through the 13th, but it's really on the 13th. Yes, um, there will be a series of hearings starting on the 10th, but the 9th, and Lisa, I'll let you take it away on this, explaining all the, the, the small the, the, detail. 
okay, the ninth will be our day where we all do as we do with our students and practice. You know, we need that hands-on practice with our children. So we will have the night. That will be our hands-on practice day, and that, which we will all need. Those of us who will be trying to run things and those of us who will be participating, that will be on June 9th. Then on June 10th, we will have the resolutions and the legislative agenda open hearing. On June 11th, we'll have the candidate forum and the Constitution and Bylaws open hearing. And then on the 12th, Justin will have the budget open hearing. <laughs> so all of those will be online in the virtual platform. So hopefully if we take advantage of our practice day and we attend the hearings, by the time we get to the RA on itself on Saturday, we will all know how the things work. Um, so and trust everyone, me, you guys, I mean, we, we were just on an officer's meeting and we were talking about it. So you won't be out there by yourself. This is new for all of us. So, you know, as Lisa said, hopefully by the time we get to the RA, we will have most of the kinks worked out, but we will still, I know this is, is becoming an overused hashtag, but we will still be in this together. <laughs> yes. And if you are a delegate, if you were elected to be a delegate to the Spring RA, you should have gotten an email today about mm -hmm. the RA, and you will get a hard copy paper in the mail as well. Justin, do you want to tell them about signing up for Ed Communities? So yes, um, please, please, please make sure that you sign up for Ed Communities. As Lisa stated, um, they there was something sent out by... I love to just kind of brag on Karen because she's the brains of the whole bunch here. But um, Karen Henderson sent out an email in regards to signing up for Ed Communities for the RA. And so we want you to make sure that you go and um, join the Ed Communities because that's where we will have um, different information pertaining to the RA itself. Um, I think everybody kind of should have gotten the the notification if not you more than welcome to send lisa or myself a message and we will get it to you i'm trying to pull it up so that i can show it to you on my screen but yeah. essentially it's just something similar to this where you join nea ed communities um it tells you takes you through the steps those types of things but it's very detailed and don't feel like you're out there alone. Please reach out to us if you have trouble getting connected in a communities. Um, but it's essentially like Facebook, the NEA platform of, of Facebook, I think. Right, Lisa? Right. And the, the important thing is, and why we want all of the delegates to sign up, those of us that have been going to the GAERA for a long time, you remember when you used to get that great big thick packet in the mail. Okay, we stopped, they stopped, we're not doing that, we went green, and you were getting an email. Well, you're not gonna get the email this year. Everything you need, all the documents you need will be in Ed Communities. So sign up for Ed Communities now, so you have time before those open hearings to download the documents you're going to need and actually look at them because we know in the past when we had that thick document and you got to the RA and you were sitting beside each other, <laughs> you, you had a question, you could lean over and ask that person sitting beside you, hey, you got this, show me. They won't be sitting beside you this year. So be prepared in advance. We all know there are certain people in the association that you call with questions about certain items. Go ahead and ask them, download it so you can ask them beforehand mm -hmm. so you have that time to make that communication. Yes. Um, and so then, of course, we have, I think, Lisa, did we, did we talk about like the GAE Retired All-Member Conference? We kind of hit on. I didn't mention that one because it's going to be separate and all of our delegates won't be attending that. And I right. know retired will send the information out because you don't have to be a delegate to attend the all member conference. Right. Yep. Okay. And then of course the RA is going to be on that 13th. 
Um, the 13th is kind of one of those numbers that we're all like, uh, cause you know, it was March 13th when we were told <sighs> Friday the 13th to be the 13th, exact. So, then we were done. Yes. So um, I'm trying to follow the thread a little bit to see if we have anything um, that people yeah, are asking. I haven't seen questions. Um, I have not either. Um, and so basically, I mean, Lisa and I kind of came on so you all would kind of see that we're here with you. We want to you know, hear your concerns as far as how can GAE better assist you. Um, but a little birdie says, Lisa, that we will probably be back on next Wednesday. Yes. Thursday, Wednesday. one of them. Wednesday yeah. or Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> one of them will work with all the schedules. Yes. Um, we'll check out the and, whole like 100 Zoom calls that we have, you know, per day. Yes. And if you have a question and we didn't see it today, I, I think we've tried to check them all, but um, mm -hmm. you can definitely send us some questions for next week. Um, we'll be back. We'll be here again. And if if we have to come up with something to talk about, you're going to hear about what we think we need to talk about. But right. we want to talk about what you want to hear. Um, or and, Lisa will give a, a kindergarten lesson and then I'll give a business ed lesson, something along the lines of that. So, you know, we just want to make sure we hear from you and to make sure that you are doing well as members. Um, so feel free to just tell us if you're struggling, you know, mentally and you need to talk to someone. We realize that um, very strong people are struggling during this time. And so please reach out to your leaders. We are here for you. Yes. And we are physically distancing. Please don't social distance yourself. Um, keep those contacts, make a phone call. And I'm advocating for everybody, even though, yes, we all don't want to show our face on Zoom, you do need to see some people. Mm -hmm. And if Zoom is the only way you can see them or FaceTime, please do that. So thank you all for joining us today. Justin, you've got that look. Do we have a question? No, I'm okay. trying to follow it now, but I okay. don't see unless my computer's not like my phone okay. is not loading them. All right. So thank you all very much for joining us. Let us know what you thought and please give us some questions, some comments, things that you want to hear about because GAE does belong to you, our members. Yes. Um, stay safe, guys.